Good morning, everyone. Today, our lecture in surgery is about pain syndromes. Um, <clears throat> now, to tell you, like, uh, what is pain syndromes or what are the conditions which are going to we are going to study under this pain syndromes is like are many. Uh, these are sometimes you can say the type of the pains which are chronic type of pains and there are a number of conditions which we are going to discuss in this lecture for example we will be discussing cervical spondylosis uh, we will be discussing um, like spondylosis by the way spondylosis what is the meaning of spondylosis it is uh, basically age related wear wear and tear or you can say the degeneration of the spinal cord so due to that degeneration the patients may have the person may have some pain uh, which can last for like many days months or years sometimes so we are going to discuss all these degenerative conditions uh, like cervical spondylosis or for example degenerative disc disease um, we are going to discuss about uh, herniation like herniated disc uh, we are going to discuss about uh, spinal stenosis uh, or we are going to discuss about for example um, one of the conditions which can occur especially in old people or in old age though it can occur at any any age like uh, uh, but especially at low a uh, like old age is like uh, like stenosis of the spinal cord uh, plus we are going to discuss about uh, uh, spondylolithiasis and we will discuss the back pain as well so <clears throat> As we all know what is pain, um, it is an unpleasant sensory and emotional experience which is associated with actual or potential tissue damage or described in terms of such damage. So like we all know uh, what is pain and um, by the way there is a specialization like uh, there are books on pain by like how to control the pain and sometimes you know um, pain is very difficult to manage especially chronic type of pains so of course pain is unpleasant it is uncomfortable and uh, um, basically it started uh, like the pain we feel is uh, basically through our nervous system okay and as we know, like there are different type of pains. Uh, we already discussed about how to take history of pain. So there could be acute pain, there could be chronic pain, there could be neuropathic pain. Uh, what is neuropathic pain? Like when some nerve is damaged. Uh, then there is something called as <clears throat> radicular pain. Okay. So uh, of course, like there are different type of pains and. Pain is very important to understand. Pain is very uh, important symptom uh, because uh, it always point towards some damage uh, in the body. Okay, and uh, as as I told you, like whenever we discuss, when whenever we take the history of pain, we always go through you know some layout like sorts are or Socrates, whatever you are using like site, origin, radiation, severity, aggravating factors, relieving factors, nature, onset, all those things, you know, we ask in the pain. So, <clears throat> um, of course, like this one is pain syndrome. So, uh, the most important finding or the most important symptom uh, by which the patient will present will be pain. Okay. 
So uh, the pain stimulus is carried by the sensory nerve fibers and you know there is what you can say the slow fibers then there is the fast fibers and uh, um, <clears throat> uh, then there is you know like referred pain which comes from the viscera as I told you there is neuropathic pain uh, which 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 basically uh, originate or which is caused by damage uh, to any part of the nervous system for example peripheral nerve like diabetic per people you know diabetic people they 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 complain of what you can say a burning pain in the feet so that is you you know because their nerves are get damaged so that's why they have this pain um, so uh, now uh, we would i would like to start from the neck pain and uh, there are of course like there are many causes of neck pain not just one cause but of course like in one lecture we cannot discuss all the causes so uh, that's why i will be discussing about uh, what you can say uh, one or two condition maximum so uh, in this photograph you can see like they are showing you the vertebral column and as we know like c1 is atlas okay and c2 is called as axis or we also call it as odontoid process, right? And uh, there are seven cervical vertebras. Okay, and out of that, that you know, eight cervical nerve roots come, come out. Uh, so that's why you know there is C1, C2, C3, C4, C5, C6, C7, and C8. Okay. So uh, now. Um, <clears throat> Uh, what you can say that uh, uh, like basically you know there are eight nerve roots and seven cervical vertebra uh, remember that the you know the nerve root exits uh, exits above the vertebra like for example c4 uh, c4 nerve root you know uh, it is uh, it comes out above C4 vertebra. So C4 nerve root will come above C4 vertebra. So that's why a C8, for example, nerve root exit above, uh, you can say T1 or you can say below C7. Okay. So uh, before going further, I want to introduce two terms, like because many people, they don't know. Uh, many medical students, they don't understand exactly what is the meaning of this thing. Uh, there is something called as radiculopathy and there is something called as myelopathy. So what is radiculopathy? Uh, when some nerve, nerve root, nerve root, for example, this is the nerve root, right? Whenever this one is compressed, okay, whenever our nerve root is compressed, we call it as radiculopathy or you can say impingement of nerve root. And what is myelopathy whenever there is impingement of the spinal cord or when spinal cord is compressed we call it as myelopathy when nerve root is compressed we call it as radiculopathy so uh, now uh, you can see over here uh, the vertebras and of course there is a lot of muscles okay like see the, like this 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 one is showing you know an unhealthy neck like the vertebra are bones that protect your spinal cord and they can wear and tear right so uh, there is something called as burst fractures and many other pathologies can occur uh, muscles are supportive tissues that can stretch tear or tighten ligaments are connective tissues that can be torn and nerves which carry the body's message can be stretched pinched or irritated and discs are shock, shock absorbers like these this is a disc this is a disc so sometimes they can bulge out they can rupture or they can wear down so again um, I'm just explaining you this thing because uh, uh, all over discussion like for example a disc prolapse you know uh, you must know what is disc right or radiculopathy when I say radiculopathy you must understand that you know the nerve is compressed or impinged or when I say myelopathy, you must know like it is spinal cord which get uh, like impingement of the spinal cord is there. 
So uh, now, what are the causes of neck pain? See, there could be muscle strains, there could be injury, there could be infection, there could be tumor. Uh, remember TTI. TTI is very easy to remember, you know. Uh, TTI means what? Tumor, uh, tumor trauma infection. So, like almost everywhere in the body, you know, it is TTI which causes problems like tumor, trauma or infections, okay. Uh, so, uh, muscle strain is one of the things, you know, which can, see, <clears throat> I don't know, like what I think, almost every one of us had uh, experienced a back pain, especially, which can be, of course, like most of the back pains are, uh, you know, are not serious by the way like if you are driving for a long time and your posture is not good you you may have back pain if your sleeping posture is not good you may have back pain many times it, ha it 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 may have it can have a serious type of underlying cause as well for example someone have cancer okay malignancy for example tumors for example so the muscle strain you know is a very common cause of uh, neck pain or back pain or any kind of these things okay so now we are going more towards our topic and uh, we will be discussing degenerative conditions during this lecture so what causes neck pain if you can see over here um, degenerative conditions can cause neck pain right uh, of course like not just degenerative generative conditions but like many other conditions but we will be discussing about degenerative conditions more, right? So, for example, in this diagram, in this picture, what you can see over here, there is a disc herniation. See, the disc is like bulging out and it is compressing this nerve root and you can see like that's why they are showing it in red. Okay. For the diagnostic purposes, guys, it's very important to, we should know what different nerve roots they do. What is their function and all this stuff? Uh, this is very, very, very important thing, right? Uh, because uh, when we examine someone and we see, uh, like, just for for example, if someone biceps are weak or brachioradialis is weak, it's mean it means C six is compressed. But if someone tricep is weak or wrist flexion is weak or finger extension, for example, is weak, it is C seven. Okay. Uh, someone deltoid is weak and biceps with biceps so it is c5 and same thing we must know these things because uh, we must know like what are the areas uh, they carry sensations from for example uh, if someone have uh, decreased sensation in the thumb only it means c6 uh, when very easy way to remember this thing uh, remember your middle finger is c7 okay so if someone have uh, decrease sensations or absent sensation in, in the middle finger or in the index finger for example it means c7 is gone whereas the ring and the little finger you know it is c8 so uh, it is very important to know these things so that's why when we examine we can catch okay what kind of what level is there which is affected and same thing with reflex so uh, again like you know when we do neurological examination what we do uh, we, we check the motor uh, motor part, we check the sensory part and we check the reflexes. So we see like what kind of motor weakness is there, what kind of sensory uh, loss is there and what reflex is affected. For example, if bicep reflex is affected, is absent, uh, so it is C5 or C6. Uh, for example, if tricep reflex is gone, it could be C7 or C8. So uh, like these basic things are very important to understand uh, all these conditions or the nerve root and all these uh, things right okay so our first condition is called a cervical spondylosis uh, to to know like what is cervical spondylosis what you must know is like uh, uh, what spondylosis means so uh, remember spondylosis is the degeneration of the vertebral vertebral column from any cause okay uh, so you can see over here spondylo is a greek word meaning vertebra and uh, uh, that's what is spondylosis right so spondylosis generally means 
changes in the vertebral joint characterized by increasing degeneration of the intervertebral disc with subsequent changes in the bones and soft tissue so you can you see uh, it's spondylosis it's a broad term okay it doesn't mean like this kind of thing is there any kind of degenerative wear and tear to the spinal cord or sorry to the vertebral column i'm sorry uh, no, to the spine or you can say is called a spondylosis so as you can see over here it is cervical spondylosis it means like that the degenerative condition is affecting the cervical vertebras okay so see here is the explanation of that thing cervical spondylosis a general term and there is a number of degenerative conditions which comes under this for example degenerative disc disease spinal stenosis so now you know like i think uh, by this like most of the medical students they know like what a stenosis it means like narrowing with or without degenerative facet joints with or without the formation of osteophytes with or without a herniated disc okay so uh, see spondylosis it's a broad term which can which can mean any one of these okay i hope you understand this thing um, again like i was talking about this thing before c1 is called as atlas c2 is called as axis and uh, then there is c3 c4 c5 c6 and c7 okay so this one is of course like they are talking about anatomy over here okay uh, by now i am i'm sure like many of you know already know what is anatomy of this uh, vertebral column okay so now uh, quickly i'm going to uh, discuss the condition right uh, and see uh, there is vertebral bodies or you can say that discs inside which are basically shock absorber and there are different ligaments there are different muscles which are covering around that area okay again like all these photographs are basically from different angles um, showing the same thing um, see again vertebral bodies are there this is anterior longitudinal ligament okay this is um, faucet cap capsulary ligament there is interspinous ligament like which is, which is which is running between the spines this is supraspinous ligament right uh, ligament there is posterior longitudinal ligament okay so uh, and this is inter inter transverse ligament this is called as ligamentum flavum so simply uh, like this one is showing you different ligaments which are joining different uh, vertebras okay and you know the spinal cord is running in between and the nerve roots they come out from here okay now uh, the thing is cervical spondylosis okay as i told you that uh, uh, spondylosis is a broad term which could be which could mean a new bone formation which could mean anything any kind of degenerative thing okay spondylosis can be caused by uh, constant um, may, may be caused by constant misuse stress um, pressure or abnormal pressure or uh, repetitive trauma poor po posture okay uh, so basically this abnormal stress which is caused to the uh, vertebral bodies or you can say the vertebra they they result in forming new bone okay uh, and why why they form new bone why or the, the formation of new bone you know you can see like these they are showing you this thing okay see the uh, like of course this is a drawing this is not reality but uh, what they are showing you know the surfaces are not so um, what you can say um, smooth and you know there is new bone formation so basically when there is abnormal pressure for over a long period of time what the bone do you know they started forming new bone uh, and why they form new bone just to compensate for the new weight distribution and uh, and because of this new bone formation you know this is the cause why spondylosis started occurring okay so again all this one will show you a lot of new uh, photographs see degenerative process of aging occur at different rates location and modalities 
based on unique attributes of individual based on what is the lifestyle how the patient how the person sit uh, for example someone who is doing office job and uh, he is sitting in a bad posture over a long period of time um, there are different professions in which like different type of bones are used and all this stuff right and even genetics you can see again like they are showing you a uh, what you can say uh, x-ray of someone who has pondylosis so this thing um, now there could be degenerative disc disease okay so um, now again like you know what is disc what is it is composed of you know what is nucleus pulposus and annulus fibrosus uh, if you're not uh, used to these terms uh, again like you can open the um, what you can say the basics and just read about that okay so what happens is basically uh, the disc there is herniation of the disc okay uh, the disc can um, pop out or you can say um, can bulge out and started causing some pressure symptoms so uh, one of the reason is like over time these layers suffer a loss of water content and proteoglycan which changes the disc mechanical properties making it less resilient to stress and strain um, again like they are showing you the pathology of the bones right uh, in this diagram uh, and see uh, again degenerative disease can be to the fist, uh, fist of, uh, faucet joints so you know these are the small small joints which are between the different uh, vertebras uh, and what happens uh, like uh, sometimes they have some new bony growths or we call it as bony spurs um, so uh, you can say like be due to that they can have uh, these conditions uh, osteophytes as I was uh, showing you uh, you can see uh, someone who have like trauma to the vertebra like pressure or stress on the vertebra over a long period of time so see uh, there is bony spurs or osteophytes are formed see new bone formation is there uh, there is disc degeneration and there is flattening of the disc okay and uh, see uh, now uh, this areas which are showing which they are showing in red uh, basically uh, there is inflammation over these areas right so when there's inflammation over these areas so of course like it is going to give pain to the patient right so anything can occur okay and again this one is about herniated nucleus pulposus which i was talking about you can see over here uh, of course like here they are showing the cross section and if you will see over here um, this nucleus pulposus which is enclosed here basically burst open from here and it is coming outside and what it is doing it is causing pressure on the spinal cord and now okay this is the thing in which we can use the word myelopathy okay so instead of radiculopathy this is myelopathy right so this patient have myelopathy and this one is like the MRI scan of the same patient and you can see the at which point like this if you can appreciate this arrow and you can see like the disc is herniated and it is causing pressure on the uh, spinal cord so when the nucleus pulposus it comes out uh, it bulge out we call it as herniated nucleus pulposus right we call it as herniated nucleus pulposus so any of these things can occur um, so again like I will show you one more uh, diagram of that okay a herniated nucleus pulposus uh, see this degeneration is there and see there's prolapse there will be extrusion with sequestration right so now of course like uh, if there is just disc bulge like this the patient will present with mild symptoms and uh, it, they usually go away with non-operative treatment and really surgery is required but when there is extrusion when this one comes out of course uh, this make the condition quite serious and they present with moderate to severe symptoms um, and uh, most of the time uh, most of the time uh, we have to go for operative treatment right okay so <clears throat> uh, of course like I'm spending a lot of time and I didn't started talking about uh, cervical spondylosis because if you will understand like what's going on with the vertebral column uh, I think the, the conditions will be easy to understand 
so uh, now of course there are other factors you know for example the spinal canal size sometimes it get narrowed we call it a spinal stenosis um, there are many mechanical factors some are static some are dynamic and there is role of ischemia as well okay uh, for these patients okay so as uh, you can see over here uh, these are the for example here they are showing you osteophytes uh, of course like the, the the thing is not clear but here uh, it is very much clear uh, you can see like the osteophytes when the person is in um, you can say extension of the neck okay or you can say backward flexion so you can see like these osteophytes which are the new bony growths uh, they are causing pressure on the spinal cord you can see over here and uh, of course like uh, the patients will be having uh, symptoms and signs as a result of this thing okay uh, so now uh, I, I talk a lot about like you can say for the last 20 minutes I'm just talking about the pathophysiology okay uh, I talk about the disc herniation uh, I, I, I talk about the disc bulging uh, I talk about the uh, bony spurs or you can say osteophytes right uh, so anyhow uh, now see what can be the consequences of all these things and number one consequences of these things can be simply pain, okay, uh, due to inflammation. And number second consequences can be radiculopathy, uh, like the impingement of the nerve root. And the number third consequences can be uh, impingement of the spinal cord, okay. Or you can say um, the symptoms which will arise due to that will be different, right. So all pathophysiology uh, which I'm talking about is of course like uh, uh, are those which can give to chronic pain syndromes or you can say pain syndromes okay so as we were discussing uh, cervical spondylosis now uh, okay cervical spondylosis whenever people have cervical spondylosis okay uh, of course like mostly in old age uh, as I told you that the disc dehydrate and shrink and uh, the signs of osteoarthritis develop uh, there is new bony projections or you can say bony spurs or you can say along the edges of the bone and uh, what you can say due to that you know the, the persons may have some symptoms okay uh, cervical spondylosis is so common in old age that you can say more than 80 percent of the people uh, older than 60 years of age uh, are affected by cervical spondylosis but that doesn't mean like all of these people they have symptoms no but sometimes of course the patient do have symptoms okay uh, and the good thing is whenever they have symptoms uh, most of the time the non-surgical treatments are good okay so uh, what can be the symptom of cervical spondylosis uh, as I told you number one uh, there could be no symptoms and whenever the symptoms are there, they can present with headaches, chronic neck stiffness and chronic neck pain. Okay. So, uh, like these symptoms can be there. And chronic neck stiffness, basically that progressively worsen with time. Okay. So, of course, like in history, you can ask this thing as well. So, uh, now... Uh, not just these things, rather, uh, again, symptoms of nerve root compression. Now, if cervical, due to cervical spondylosis, if, for example, over here or here, you can see that the nerve root is also compressed and see what is written over here, cervical, spondylotic, now radiculopathy. Now, radiculopathy is understood that there is impingement of the nerve root, okay. When this thing is there, now the condition will be changed, okay? As I told you, most people, they don't have symptoms. When the symptoms comes, they could be only neck stiffness and neck pain or headache. But see, here, the nerve root is compressed. Now the story will change. Now, the nerve is the one which is carrying all the motor and the sensory fibers. So now these are the people who may have numbness or you can say tingling 
numbness, weakness in the arm, hands, feet, or leg, whatever. Of course, like whatever nerve root is done. Um, there could be weakness of the arms. There could be lack of coordination and difficulty in walking. Okay, it there there could be loss of blood or bowel control. Anyhow, uh, that could that is a uh, another discussion. But uh, it may resemble carpal tunnel syndrome, rotator cuff problems, or gout. Why? Because you know there is just pain. So of course, like the doctors, uh, uh, they are going to uh, make a differential diagnosis. They will run the investigation, and then they they will reach to the point that okay, this is cervical spondylosis. Okay, uh, now um, any person who has cervical spondylosis, uh, you can see over here. Okay, sometimes, for example, if the vertebral artery is also compressed, so what can happen? Now, when the vertebral artery is compressed, so guys, you know, uh, vertebral arteries are the one which are uh, which combine together and they take the uh, blood to the brain, the posterior circulation. Now they may have ocular problems, double vision, vertigo, tinnitus, and unsteadiness. Of course, very rare, but it can occur, right? And the last thing, which again, you would understand why I told you what is radiculopathy and what is uh, myelopathy. So see, due to this, when there is stenosis, see, you can say, uh, you can see over here, uh, there is some ratio, Pavlov ratio, okay, in which like the, they, they take a ratio between the canal and the body, right? Um, so, you can see over here, this is the healthy, healthy cervical canal. But this one is cervical stenosis. See, uh, now the cross-sectional area has come, right? This is a herniated disc. And this is foraminal stenosis. So, see, it will result into radiculopathy. It will result into radiculopathy or myelopathy. But this one will result into myelopathy. So, of course, like then uh, <laughs> the condition can be different, right? Then the symptoms will be that of uh, myelopathy. So, uh, I think like it's very easy to understand by the diagrams, right? Because I found like so many of the students, you know, they found it, that they found it, this topic difficult to understand from the books. Okay. Uh, again, like spinal stenosis, they are showing you. Okay. Uh, this one is oval or triangular shape stenosis and this one is clover leaf pattern. Okay. Uh, so, this is there. And this one is the MRI oh, of the, uh, you can say, uh, the spinal cord and the vertebral bodies. And you can see over here. Uh, they have marks, this is C4, this is C5, this is C6, C4, C5, and C6. And if you can see over here, see, there is compression of the spinal cord at multiple points, right? So, see, this is spinal canal stenosis from C4, C5, and C6 at this level, okay? So, again, this one. Uh, one more. This is the normal spinal canal and this is the stenos cervical canal you can see over here so now guys <laughs> whenever there is spinal cord compression of course so you can see the word which they are using over here cervical spondylitic myelopathy now uh, of course like there will be loss of sensation or abnormal sensations of the shoulder arms or legs weakness of the arms or legs and loss of bladder and bowel control loss of balance unsteady gait and impairment of proprioception now remember this thing that uh, if you are very good or if you know the basics of uh, neuroanatomy or and neurophysiology um, you must you would understand what's going on uh, spinal cord is the one which is taking away all the uh, fibers from the brain to the body or from the body body to the brain so of course when it is compressed everything below that below that level will be affected okay so how we diagnose this one first of all we take history 
symptoms and signs we'll go for physical examination we do radiological examination we can do electromyographies so in physical exam in, in clinical history of course you will ask about the onset duration progression and all these things okay what kind of job the person do and all this stuff um, in in, di in like in physical examination of course like you will check the posture uh, you will check the range of motion of cervical spine okay both active and passive active is like when the person is moving himself and passive is when like you are moving you will palpate uh, the trigger points and you will go for a neurological examination okay so all these things you are going to do uh, so uh, again like this is too basic uh, you can go and see my neurological examination videos as well uh, of course like uh, this is the point I was talking about before that you must know uh, uh, what are uh, the levels uh, which supply for like C5 nerve root supplies what part sensation what kind of motor activity do and what is the reflex fibers it carries right so of course like in physical examination you are going to physical exam like you are going to do the examination of all these things uh, to understand like what kind of level the person is affected with okay okay now these are some special tests okay uh, uh, with special tests for no nerve root comp compression uh, one is called a spurling test okay and what is spurling test uh, it is also you can also it is also called as cervical compression test so uh, you can see like basically we ask the patient to literally flex the head and like the doctor they put a downward pressure so um, what you can say if the person due to that pressure if they have neck or shoulder pain on the ipsilateral side the side of the head where it is flexed right uh, it shows that the result is positive okay uh, so uh, you can say see like positive upper extremity radicular pain or paresthesia produced or intensified okay so spurling test or you can say cervical compression test uh, it is simply used to see either there is any type of nerve compression is there so of course like when you are putting pressure on the head uh, pushing it down uh, you are uh, making the that condition a little worse and if it is positive of course it will tell you that there is some sort of nerve root compression right so this is called a spurling test or cervical compression test uh, then there's distraction test as well okay um, like you can see like this is again like the idea of this thing is to cause a pressure on the nerve root um, then okay of course like we can check the muscle tone ankle cloners deeper tendon reflexes uh, pathological reflexes and all this one uh, simply to check like either there is any type of spinal compression is there or not okay uh, one more thing which we can do is called as uh, Lee Hermitage signs um, like again like when the patient flex their neck they feel electrical shock all over their body okay but like I'm not uh, mentioning this thing over here when you will study multiple sclerosis I think you are going to study that thing in more detail okay so uh, simply after examination if you found that the patient have decreased range of motion a positive cervical compression test so or the decrease decrease reflexes or the decrease sensation or decrease motor power or anything like whatever is your finding again you are going to label the patient according to that either it's like uh, there is uh, radiculopathy is there or myelopathy is there right all these things should be uh, done uh, again okay after the physical examination of course we will go for the diagnosis uh, we can do an x-ray okay and you can see over here in this x-ray uh, you can see the bony spurs the new bone formation okay uh, we can go for a MRI okay you can see like like here there's a drawing uh, above this one you can see like the compression they are causing to the spinal cord okay now okay how we treat this these these patients okay uh, treatment is quite um, um, uh, simple um, you can say uh, non-surgical most of the time uh, and what they do is like uh, for they go for conservative uh, treatment they educate the patient they ask them to what is the comfortable posture uh, some lifestyle modifications are needed in case if it is job oriented 
uh, physiotherapy can be given or physical therapy can be given um, and shades can be given for the pain okay uh, so uh, there are, you know there are different massages also uh, acupuncture um, nice guideline says that you know it have what you can say uh, I believe like grade 4 evidence like uh, very few people you know they can, they make what you can say get better uh, due to that okay uh, you can see over here the woman is very wearing a neck collar right so again like this is just to immobil immobilize the neck uh, so I told you NSAIDs can be given uh, cervical traction can be given okay uh, so what is the role of physical therapy by the way uh, physical therapy is very effective for restoring range of motion uh, with uh, strengthening of the muscles okay uh, so of course like a physiotherapist guy you know they they know like what kind of thing or what kind of exercises they have to give uh, but of course like we are discussing the surgical thing so uh, remember like any person who is not responding to all these treatments we can go for surgery so uh, and especially we go for surgery whenever there is any myelopathy or radiculopathy so what kind of surgical options are there I will show you some okay this one is ACDF it is anterior cervical discectomy dis dis and fusion so what they do they uh, they you can see over here they fix the vertebras okay of course by the metal plates okay and you can see over here the metal plate is in this person by the help of screws what they do so that you know when the cervical vertebras will be uh, fixed at one place um, what will happen of course there will be no pain okay um, so you can see over here this is uh, anterior cervical discectomy and fusion okay so you can see over here okay so this is one of the treatments okay uh, one thing is called a cervical arthroplasty it's not pasty it's plasty okay uh, so what is this one see uh, they put this prosthesis between the cervical uh, cervical vertebras uh, maybe I can show you one more photograph you can see over here a person who have cervical arthroplasty done okay uh, in this person okay so <clears throat> this thing can be done so you can say we can put a give a fusion or we can give, do a arthroplasty. you can see over here the x-rays okay they have fixed the vertebras then there is a surgery for stenosis that is called as laminoplasty and uh, of course like when the when the spinal cord is steno so you have to make the area bigger you can see over here the stenos place what they do they cut it open and they make the area bigger okay it is called as laminoplasty okay so all those things are there how we can prevent that maintain good posture take frequent stretch breaks from desk computer work avoid activities that cause the neck to hyperflex or hyper extend okay other than that we will discuss low back pain okay now uh, guys uh, let me tell you one thing I, I spent much of the time on discussing cervical spondylosis I hope like you guys have the concept now right so when you have the concept I think the thing will be easy for like for you to understand the rest of the things okay low back pain or back pain right now a low back pain is very 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 common okay like especially when you are working as a in a general practice you are going to see a lot of patients with a low back pain okay so uh, remember like uh, it's very 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 common okay uh, now uh, <clears throat> it is so common that uh, there are guidelines to which person you know you must perform some investigations what are the red flags for the back pain for example someone have weight loss someone have fever someone have infection okay go for more investigations otherwise most of the back pains are mechanical 
I don't think so. I have to discuss all the things again because the same things. But now we are talking about the lumbar vertebra. We are not talking about the cervical vertebra anymore, right? So of course, like now we are like everything is same except the area has changed. Before we were discussing the neck. Now we are discussing uh, what you can say uh, the lumbar area, right? So now back pain is very, very, very common. Okay. It is a most common reason for the people to go to the doctor to miss uh, to miss their school to miss their offices right and uh, uh, very common common it is there right so now uh, uh, what you can say what are the causes of low back pain okay okay you must know what is quadric vena what is conus medullaris right um, like if you know, um, if you, like if you don't know, by the way, what is what is conus medullaris means. So remember, guys, you know, uh, like uh, the spinal cord terminates at L1, L2 level. We call it as conus medullaris, right? So uh, now uh, you can see over here. I'm not discussing anything because we have discussed these things a lot. Okay. Uh, now, um, there are many causes of low back pain, okay? There are many causes, like some are acute causes, some are chronic causes. Acute are like when it lasts for few days to few weeks, but any pain which is more than 12 weeks, we call it as chronic, okay? And again, what are the causes of low, low back pain? There could be uh, some spinal skeletal irregularities, like scoliosis, there could be injuries, there could be trauma, there could be strains, there could be degenerative problems like spondylosis, there could be arthritis, there could be herniated disc, there could be quadric venous syndrome, there could be osteoporosis and many, many, like the list is never ending, okay? So, now you can see over here, um, a disc is made up of two parts, again, the same thing, nucleus fibrosis and annulus fibrosis, right? And sometimes it can bulge out and can compress the spinal cord. Muscle strain, lumbar disc herniation, lumbar stenosis, spondylolithiasis, and piriform syndrome. Okay, uh, now all these are basically the causes of low back pain. Okay, uh, now uh, the most common uh, cause of low back pain. Okay, the most common cause of low back pain is what? The important thing is this: the most common cause of low back pain is muscle strain. Okay. Uh, okay, what is spondylolithiasis? Now, spondylolithiasis is basically uh, a condition uh, like uh, when one vertebra slips on the other vertebra. Okay, um, maybe we can see some photograph over here. I will show you. Again, like the same thing is there going on. Okay, there is nothing new. Uh, but I will show you spondylolithiasis. Because you know what is stenosis, maybe you don't know what is lithiasis, right? Uh, okay, again, this is a diagram which is showing you spinal uh, disc herniation, right? And the same story will go on. Radiculopathy or myelopathy, right? Um, the same thing. There is nothing new in this one, okay? Uh, okay, uh, whenever there is disc herniation, how the patient will present? Like they have a continuous or intermittent back pain. They may have spasm of the back muscles. They may have shatika. Of course, like the pain starts from the back and goes all the way towards the leg, calf or the foot. There could be muscle weakness. There could be numbness. There could be quadra equina syndrome. What is quadra equina syndrome? Of course, when the spinal cord is compressed, there will be changes in bladder and bowel function. It's an emergency. And there will be decreased reflexes. I am sure like if you, if you are listening to this lecture carefully, like I don't have to explain these things, okay? Because... That's why I spend a lot of time in telling you what is myelopathy, what is radiculopathy. Uh, okay, again, the same story which I told you in the upper limb or in the neck, the same story you must know about the lower limb. What is a function of L1, L2, L3, L4, L5, S1? Okay, why? Because the most common areas, okay, in the neck is around C4 to C6, right? 
but in the let the most common area is L4 to S1 okay I can ask these questions in the exam so uh, you can search yourself okay what are the most common for cervical spondylosis and stuff like this so see they are showing you again L4 where the feel pain is felt where the numbness occurred what is the motor weakness what is the screening exam what is the reflexes L5 and about S1 okay uh, so everything is written over here you can pause the video you can see but of course this one is taken from the books and I don't want you guys to not just know what is the function of L4 or L5 S1 rather you must know what is the function of L1 to L S2 okay or what is the function of even like S3 S4 or what is the function of C1 to like these are basics by the way so uh, like of course like someone who is checking for the S1 nerve root C they are doing the ankle reflex you can see over here S1 is the one which carries the ankle jerk uh, there is a mnemonic by the way to remember the nerve root uh, you know one to buckle my shoe so S1 and S2 are the one which carries uh, the ankle jerk uh, three four knock the doors so uh, you knock the doors so knocking knees knocking so L3 and L4 are, are the one which carry the knee jerk uh, five six pick up sticks so remember bicep are the one which you are used to flex your arm so five six so C5 and C6 are bicep and seven eight is lay them straight so tricep are the one by which you do extension so C7 and C8 are, are for uh, tricep reflex and 910 is a big fat hand so of course like um, that is for abdominal reflexes so not over so this is about l5 nerve root you can see over here and then they are showing you l4 nerve root right uh, and you see they are showing you the knee knee reflex uh, okay uh, what are the how the uh, knee jerk works right this one okay so uh, now any patient who will come with the back pain and if you found something sinister or something like of course you can go for investigations uh, what are the tests we can do we can go for a straight leg raising test okay we ask the patient to st straight uh, like raise the leg and if they feel the back pain of course like it means there is some stretch to the nerve okay um, then we can do brigades brigades test a record angle at which pain occurs a normal value bit uh, would be 80 to 90 degrees higher in people with ligament laxity so this thing can be done uh, <clears throat> these are the special tests you can say to check for the spinal pathology uh, the investigations are quite same we will go for x-ray okay the first diagnostic tool is of course x-ray uh, you can see over here uh, this one is x-ray and of course like the same thing we can go for MRI uh, MRI of course will give you a broad picture will tell, tell you uh, or CT scan even uh, we will tell you the condition of the disc uh, we will tell you if there is any disc prolapse will tell you if there is any stenosis it will tell you if there is any lithiasis right so uh, how we treat back pain again conservative therapy bed rest will be given uh, patient education uh, one of the way we teach them is like how to pick up the weight if they are uh, they have to carry some heavy weight what are the ways by which you cannot put the weight on your back okay or vertebra so it's always like to sit down and pick the heavy stuff by the help of your legs not your back okay don't bend down and pick up the things so physiotherapy massage conditioning exercise programs weight control medications and if it is not controlled by that then we go for surgeries okay and uh, or we go for surgery whenever there is any myelopathy so or quadric venous syndrome you can say so again the surgery you can see over here uh, this is a person who have l4 l5 disc herniation okay and what is done uh, again laminotomy and dis dis disc discectomy uh, okay discectomy okay like remove the disc and see fix the vertebras okay so the same type of surgery uh, one of the thing is also called as micro discectomy so uh, what is that one you can see over here the microscope so microscopically uh, they can they can fix that area which is causing pressure on the 
spinal cord right so see this one so this is that why that's why it is called as micro discectomy okay uh, nowadays of course there is endoscopic uh, surgeries are also available so that's why we can go for endoscopic discectomy see by the help of endoscope they can remove the disc uh, so uh, now the last topic i think which will do uh, which i uh, yes uh, spondylolithiasis so what i told you spondylolithiasis is when one vertebra see it should, it is not in the line these three are in line but this one is slipped forward so one vertebra is slipped on its adjacent vertebra so this is called a spondylolithiasis right okay so you can see there is type 1 you can see this is type 2 and this is type 3 okay so one there is dysplastic there is isthmic there is degenerative spondylolithiasis you can see over here due to the slipping of the vertebra see there is compression of the nerve root you can see over here and the last thing is spinal stenosis so the same thing which i told you like uh, cervical stenosis uh, there is stenosis of the lumbar spinal uh, canal as well so of course there will be narrowing of the spinal canal and uh, of course like uh, it could be degenerative or it could be congenital right so spinal stenosis of course uh, uh, whenever someone have a spinal stenosis you know it compress the nerves uh, so that's why whenever the per person you know they do some activity they feel pain numbness and paresthesia so we call it as classic neurogenic claudication and uh, it works it worsen with prolonged standing activity or position involving lumbar extension okay and it is relieved by sitting recumbency or position that reduce a degree of lumbar lordosis such as bending forward right so uh, we of course we go for examination we do physical examination and we see if it is going away. Uh, it is written over here. DD differential diagnosis is vascular claudication. Uh, many people, uh, okay, not uh, by the way. It's very easy to uh, teach to tell you this thing. Uh, recently, I uh, uploaded a lecture about the arterial condition. In that one, I told you what is claudication. What is claudication distance? So anyone who in which like there is a pain on walking, um, it could be peripheral vascular disease, right? Uh, so of course like because the symptom is same that the pain comes uh, when the person is uh, uh, walking okay so of course it is called as like it could be confused with vascular claudication uh, so of course like uh, uh, to 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 catch that you have to differentiate between these two so one of the thing you know like when we say that the person has spinal stenosis when there, there is narrowing of the spinal ca canal uh, to less than one centimeter or you can say less than 10 millimeter uh, it could be congenital as i told you it could be uh, due to osteoporosis it could be acquired okay like sometimes after surgeries uh, sometimes in the patients who have ankylosing spondylitis sometime in the people due to trauma sometime in the people who have paget's disease okay uh, so the thing is uh, <clears throat> when they have difficulty with back extension okay it is also called as camp sign so how we treat these patients uh, simply uh, ct mri of course gold standard or ct myelogram uh, can be done uh, so uh, again the same thing non-operative treatments like physiotherapy we tell them flexion exercises we tell them stretch exercises and said we give them okay but if it is not done by that okay uh, of course operations are needed uh, so a decompressive type of surgery is done and I, I show you like in cervical area you know what kind of surgery is done so uh, remember guys that you know uh, uh, a way to differentiate between neurogenic and vascular claudication. Uh, in neurogenic claudication, it comes with standing or exercise, and uh, vascular claudication have a some set distance when it starts. Uh, and neurogenic claudication, it uh, 
goes away by sitting, laying down or by flexion. A vascular claudication become better when you stop walking. Uh, neurogenic claudication relieves in around 10 minutes. Vascular claudication relieves quite early like in 1 to 2 minutes. Okay. Uh, in neurogenic claudication, you, maybe you will found some neuro neurological deficit. In uh, vascular claudication, there is more muscle cramping. Okay. So, this thing is there. So, now, uh, um, I think like that's pretty much about uh, spinal stenosis and spondylolithiasis. Um, uh, the most common area, you know, when where there is lumbar disc herniation, it is L5 S1. Okay, L5 S S1 is more commonly affected than L4 L5. Uh, so, uh, like this one, these are some back exercises. Uh, better to see YouTube. Okay, again, like some back exercises. Better to see YouTube for this thing if you're interested. Otherwise, uh, okay, this is the right way to to uh, you can say uh, lift a heavy weight rather than this this is the wrong way here you are stressing your legs here you are stressing your back right so this is one of the preventive message for the people uh, how to pick up heavy weight okay so that you know their back should not hurt so thank you so much guys for listening i hope you understand and you like this lecture i will see you in the next lecture Till then, goodbye.